guy acre, and uh, I fished, fished the Turner Trail for 36 years. Glad to be with Pure Fishing. Got some new baits I want to show you. The Havoc baits, brand new. They're actually hard to get, but uh, we got them down here at the Bass Masters this week, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit how to use them and the, the way I use them, the way some of the pros use them. I'm going to start off with the uh, new bait here, and uh, this is a little finesse worm. You know, we got it in two different sizes. And what I'm going to show you here, this is called the Bottom Popper, and this is a design by Larry Nixon. He's with my pure fishing, and I'm going to show you how to rig this thing. Now, I usually just bite the top off of that thing and put it on a little, what I call a little shaky head just like that right there. When I get in trouble and can't catch a lot of fish, this is my go-to bait right here. And I'm going to show you in a minute in the tank how these fish will eat this thing. But this is a good, good bait to catch fish. About anybody can use it. Uh, I usually put it on maybe 10, no bigger than 12-pound test line, fishing around docks and stuff like that. All I do is just, just got a little spring on this jig head. That's an eight pound jig head. You just twist it up on your little jig head, stick it in the little flat part like that, and that's a Texas rig so you can work it in brush or bushes or whatever. Very, very good bait. And we got about 10 different colors in it. Bottom hopper. And this bottom hopper, this is 6.25 in length. We got the smaller one, it's 4.75. And I'm going to show you a bit. This is my little drop shot deal. And a lot of people don't know a lot about drop shot. And I'm telling you, it's a good way to catch fish, especially when it gets hot. In the winter time, when them fish down 10, 15, 20, 25 foot deep, I catch a lot of fish on this bait. And this is exactly the way I rig it. I'm putting a little weight down here. Put me a little number, uh, this is number one hook, is what that is, a wide gap hook. That's a little 4.75 inch worm. And the secret to this thing is get it down and bump the bottom with that weight. When that fish hears that weight hit the bottom, he's going to run down and see what it is. He knows this little worm, the bottom hopper's not supposed to be down and suspended, working like it's alive. I catch a lot of fish on this. I'm a power fisherman. This is time. You've got to take this out, man. This is a verdict rod. This is a new rod. And this is strand. This is strand right here. But it's a braided line. I use a lot of braided line. People some braided line on drop shot in clear water. I put a five foot leader on it. Most of your pros are using it. They don't tell you about it. But this is no memory, no kinks, no mess up. Fill it up with line and use it on and on and on. When you need a new leader, just put your five foot leader back on there and use it. This is 10 pound test line, full carbon. I use a full carbon line all the time. When I'm not using this braided line, it's transonic braid is what it is. And I've changed a lot of people's ways of fishing by showing this in a seminar. I like a seven foot rod, medium action to do this with. In fact, when I'm fishing this, I use the same rod, seven foot rod, medium action. But you need to try this. And again, I'm going to show you in the tank why this works. I mean, I've caught a lot, a lot of fish. When it gets tough, you get out there in deep water and those fish is not hit. You can't get to them, you can't catch them. Get straight over top of them. A lot of time I'll pitch it. If I come up to a point, I'll just pitch it out on a pole as far as I can. And sit there and bump that weight, pick it up. I hold my rod tip around 11 o'clock. I don't go this 9 to 12. Hold it up around 11 o'clock and watch the bow in your line. You ever see that boat jump? I don't wait to fill him. That bow moves or moves left to right, I set the hook. And you don't really have to come back and set the hook real hard. That's a sharp little hook. Just put it in him. Let him pull back. When he pulls back, you'll sink that thing from outside. Most of the time, you catch them right up here on the top of the roof of the mouth. Very, very good to catch fish when it's tough. All right, the next one is, uh, I'm going to show you this. Is, uh, this is a twister tail that I use a lot. And I say twister tails. Anytime I'm throwing maybe a spinner bait or even rig this up on a head like this, I throw it a lot of times on a regular jig head. When fish are finessive, they're hard to catch. Just twist this up on the head. You got the little twin tails out there. You bump it on the bottom. And you can swim it. But uh, it's a little twister tail. And it works on spinner baits, buzz baits. Anytime you need a trailer, this is good to use. It's got a lot of action to it. And uh, something about this uh, Havoc we had said a lot about. The reason I think the Havoc is so much better than what we have before, you know, I, I like the stuff we got with the food in it and everything, the fish hold it in the mouth. 
butt, but taking it out. Look how familiar these tails are. It's a lot more lively looking. It swims a lot. It's got a lot more action to it. All these baits are like that. It's got a lot of more action than the tail. All right, and this is a this is a bait that uh, is new. A lot of people don't know about it. But uh, I want to show you something. You probably have to go and get up close. When I seen this thing, this is Alcanelli bait. It's called a Devil's Spear. Is what it's called, a Devil's Spear. What I like about it, you can actually punch it through high drilling with like an ounce of weight, catch fish down in that stuff. But here's what I really like about it. When it comes over something, watch what happens. Look at that tail. I don't care if you're crawling on the bottom, over a limb, it always vibrates and jumps and shakes like it's alive. So I think it's going to be a good Carolina rig. I really think for summertime fishing, when fish out there on drops, take that thing up, put your leader on there and about an ounce weight or half ounce weight, throw it out there, and you drag. I've done an experiment with this thing in an aquarium there at my house. I don't care if it's on sand, rock, or limbs. When it comes across it, it's got that hesitation to jump like it's alive. So you're going to see a lot of fish caught on this bay, I think, also. Uh, punching through grass, fishing on a Carolina rig. And you can put it on a, a jig if you want to. I like a little more action on a jig because this the dry like this to actually crawl over limbs and crawl on the bottom. All right, let's go to another thing. This is one of my better baits. This is a skeet reef bait, and uh, skeet sort of helped design this thing. It's called a, it's called a pit moss bait, and this is one of my favorite colors. And I fish it just like it is. And it's, a good, it's a good bait to flip bushes, grass, high drill, a mill pole. Use your heavy weight, get it down in there where they're at. See, a lot of people don't realize when you see matted grass, they think it stick like that all the way to the bottom. Well, grass grows the top and it maps. When it maps, underneath there is like another world. Them fish are swimming all underneath them little snails down there. And then it's protected by the sun. And what you do, you just put your big weight on that thing, put you about a five all hook in it. Bust it through them mats with her. So again, I use Strand Sonic Bray, either like a 1450 or a 1040 braided line. So when you hit him, you got to come out with him. If you use a regular line, he's down in there, 15, 20 pound test line, he's going to break you off. You can't get him out of that high drill. But what I use it for, too, I've got a jig here that I use a lot. And I use that trailer. Now you got to pinch it off. I let's go up here and pinch about that much of it off. Thread it on there. and talk about a lot of action in the water. That tail gives that bait a lot of life action. And, uh, when you're swimming that thing or you're hopping it over limbs and little tails, it's just like it's alive. It's like a crawfish. It's exactly what it looks like. And I found out one thing about using something like this. I think the slower you use it, the bigger fish you're going to catch. You know, I had a, a fish that I raised in the aquarium for like the one pound. I raised it up to four and a half pounds, 120 gallon aquarium. One thing I found out about the big fish, throw a crawfish in there and he'll run around, run around, run out and play with it. But you let that thing get in the corner and when it sits down and all of a sudden the little tips will start doing, that's when he eats it. So they can't stand something real slow. And that's the reason we got these little deals here and this little deal here. That thing sits down there and it's got little air bubbles in it and it starts doing this number. A big fish can't stand it. He'll eat it. And that's the reason I think this is a big fish bait. You get a lot of big fish on the jig. It's a power bait. When you go down through that stuff, and trees and docks and, and, and stubs and logs, but you won't catch as many. When you catch one, it's going to be a good one. Again, this is a verdict rod and uh, Abu Garcia uh, reel. I like the new uh, Revo Premier. It's a little more expensive rod, but I guarantee you, when you pay for a reel like this, you're getting your money's worth. And it's like the old deal. How many people see I had this reel for 50 years? Abu Garcia makes some of the best equipment in the world. I talked to the people who make this, the engineers, said right now we have the best ball bearings in the world in that reel. I said we're not saying somebody else won't make one better, but right now we got the best. This is a verdict rod, medium heavy, 7'3". That's what I pitch my jig on. And I pitch flip underhanded a lot of times, and I'll show you in a minute again. Very seldom I ever throw open handed. I am an underhanded caster. When you pitch it under a dock, guy throwing overhand he can't get to it. So remember, under the dock is where you're going to get the box. Alright, now I told you about the little uh, bottom hopper. Alright, I'm going to show you another, another deal I like to use. 
again, I'll show you this in the tank also. Uh, this is called whacking, and I use a little bit different deal than other people. This is a weighted little hook. I put that little weight on there so it'll sink a little faster, but the worm does like this as it sinks. And I'm not sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for it to sink. So I like a little weight on mine. And uh, I have a little weed guard on there, so I can fish it around brush. Put a little weed guard like this right here. And you know, it protects me from getting hung up a lot, but it's so soft I don't miss many fish. But when this thing goes to the bottom, it's like this. That's the way it goes down. Right now, in fact, a lot of these guys out here fishing today are catching fish on this wacky style deal. A lot of fish being caught on. Again, I use a, a braided line. Braided line, I use a 314. What I try to do is use the smallest braid I can, which is like the size of a hair on your head. But it's 14 pound test line. And again, it's on a spinning outfit. And mostly when I pitch this thing, it's always underhanded. Very seldom I ever throw it overhand. And uh, braided line, 314. And uh, this is a new reel that's out. I've been using this reel for a long, long time. And it's a Revo Premier spinning reel also. Again, Verdict Rock. Yeah, let me show you one more thing. This is a Bobby Lane. This is called Crawl Fat. And uh, I use this a lot of different ways. You know, you can swim this bait and use it for a trailer. It's a little more flatter. See, it's a little bit different than in the skeet reef. The skeet is just a little more chunky. And in fact, you've got to use about a 5 all hook in this one because of the fatness. I recommend 5 all hook or, or more. This one you can get by using three or four of them, so see how skinny it is. But you got all this crawfish action on the back. What I like to do with this, I like to take a, a head like this right here if I'm going to fish it deep or either fish it fat. You know, I'll just screw this in the top. Just like this right here. I also use this on my, behind a jig a lot too. It's just, you know, you've got to experiment a little bit and see which one works the best. I swim it on the bottom of my hop it, swim it. And this is a this I think it maybe is a little over quarter quarter ounce head. Sometimes I go to a lighter one or a bigger one. I have used three quarters. If I go to Kentucky Lake fish those drops, I put a three quarter head on that thing, I put ball size head, put this on there, get it down there, and all you're doing is represent the crawfish. And that thing's down there bumping on the bottom around them stumps and rocks. Looks just like a crawfish, we'll get a lot of bite. Remember, brand new bait, Havoc, we can't make them fast enough. Everywhere I've been, we've sold out of them, and the people that I've talked to that's fished with them is having good success with it, and uh, hopefully this year I'm going to have good success with fishing the PAA circuit.